ZW recently announced equatorial mode for the C-Star S30 and S50. Now, if you're wondering why you would want to try equatorial mode, here's why. In equatorial mode, you don't experience field rotation, which means that you can image the same object all night instead of being limited to the roughly hour or hour and a half that you are in Altaz mode. Second, you can potentially get better tracking since the telescope is only tracking in one axis as opposed to two axes. To use equatorial mode, you will need a tripod and some sort of tripod head or wedge that allows you to adjust the angle that your C-Star is going to be at. Now I'm using this Manfrotto 3-axis head, uh, but I'm only using this because I already have this. Uh, but a lot of people use the Skywatcher uh, wedge, which is not very expensive and works quite well. Um, so that allows you to adjust the angle of the C-Star or adjust the latitude of the C-Star. Uh, to use it in equatorial mode. And I have a link to the Skywatcher head in the description of this video, along with the accessories you're gonna need to make that work for the C-Star. Um, and I already sold my Skywatcher head a long time ago, so I don't have that anymore. So I'll be using this uh, Manfrotto head in my de demonstration, but it works the exact same way. Now, if you're using a C-Star S30, you don't really need much else. You just attach your tripod bracket to the bottom of your C-Star and put it on your tripod head. If on the other hand, you are using a C-Star S50, you would have to make sure that these bottom legs on the C-Star uh, base don't end up hitting any part of your tripod bracket or your tripod. So if you use a large bracket like this one, it is possible that when the C-Star is turning, the legs could hit part of the bracket. So in that case, you would have to use a washer such as this one here. So put that on your, on your tripod uh, bracket like this and then attach that to the bottom. Uh, that way, the tripod bracket has enough space above it that it's not going to hit these legs. And um, I've put one of these washers in the description of this video as well if you are using a C-Star S50. So let's say Polaris is right up there in that direction. C-Star is facing Polaris and the power button of the C-Star is facing up. Okay, once I have the C-Star uh, set up like this, I'm going to open up the C-Star application. And in the C-Star application, I can either click on the picture of the C-Star or click on the Me tab at the bottom right. Go all the way to the bottom where it says Advanced Feature. Click on that. And near the bottom, you will see mount mode. It says alt as mode right now. Uh, but I'm going to click on the How to use mode. mode on Got it. So you can ignore that. Now, uh, you just follow the instructions over here. It's very, very simple. Uh, so uh, you can see there where it says current latitude at the bottom right. It shows 51 degrees. Uh, that is the latitude that we need to set it up as. The one in red shows you the, the latitude above the ground. And uh, that is what it's currently as. So you can see if, if I move my C-Star head up and down, or I can move it like this, you can see that the latitude is changing there. So it's showing 48 degrees. I can adjust it higher. And there we go, that's 51 degrees. So the white is the current latitude, 51 degrees, and the red is the latitude that the C-Star is set at right now, which is what I need to be at. So now those two are matching and I'm good to go. Now, some people might be confused by the figures given on the side over here of your mount, if you have a mount like this. Now, on my particular mount, it shows zero degrees at the top and 90 degrees at the bottom. I just completely ignore anything that it says on the side of your mount over here. That might just cause more confusion. Just go by what it says on the app and it literally could not be any simpler. Now, for anyone who is really curious about how it, it would work with the markings on the side of your mount, uh, even though you don't need to know any of this, if you are at the North Pole, Polaris will be straight up. And in that case, you would be pointing the top of your telescope straight up. Uh, so that would be an altitude of 90 degrees. So if I set it like that, you can see in the app that it shows uh, well, 90 degrees. So if I set it up like that, it shows roughly 90 degrees. Uh, but if you're at the equator, it will show zero degrees and then you would, your C-star would be like this. 
Now on my mount, when I set it up like this, pretending I'm at the North Pole at an altitude of 90 degrees, my scale actually shows zero degrees. So that is the opposite of what it should be. So if your tripod is like mine, where it shows zero degrees at the top and 90 degrees in the horizontal at the, at the bottom, uh, then what you have to do is subtract uh, the your current latitude from 90 so 90 minus 51 and that'll give me 39 degrees and then on this scale I would have to set my telescope here to 39 degrees okay so when I set it to 39 degrees on my scale the app will show the correct 51 degree latitude now if your scale is the opposite of mine and it shows 90 degrees at the top and zero degrees at the bottom uh, at the horizontal uh, then you can actually follow your scale so if 90 degrees was at the top for my scale uh, at the top then I could set it to 51 degrees on my scale and it would be correct so once that's done I will click switch at the top it says make sure you're in home position click OK and now BC star has been switched over to equatorial mode now I'll just click on the button here which says get polar aligned deviation and when I click on that the C star will automatically start moving it'll point to a part of the sky and it'll plate solve it'll take a picture of that part of the sky and figure out exactly where it's pointing and then it'll tell you how you need to move your mount whether up and down or left and right slightly uh, to get very very accurate polar alignment okay that was pretty fast and my results okay there we go zero degrees and 0.1 degrees I think that's quite close enough okay now that we're done we can go back Let's go all the way back. Now let's find a target. I want to image M42. I'll just select that from my recent. Okay, so our first image in equatorial mode has come in. Let's look at the stars. Those are 30 second exposures and the stars are perfect. Wow, that is amazing. Okay, um, well, what I'm gonna do now is to just uh, just let it run. Uh, since I can image a target for as long as I want now, I'm not limited to roughly one hour uh, by field rotation. I'm just going to let it run all night and uh, see what we get in the morning. Okay, we are back inside and here are the results of the stack. So on the very left, this is a stack in Altaz mode of about one hour of data. And as you can see at the top right corner, you can see the field rotation there that starts cutting off the image after a little over an hour. In the middle is a stack from the Sea Star of roughly an hour, but this is in equatorial mode. And now you can see at the top right, there is no field rotation. And now we'll be able to image the same target all night or over several nights if we want. And then at the very right is the stack that I did in PixInsight using the data from the equatorial mode uh, from image two. Uh, so again, it looks pretty good, slightly sharper than the stack that was done by the C star. But again, these are all unprocessed raw images. Now, one thing I noticed uh, between the Altaz image of the C star and the um, equatorial mode image is that the equatorial mode image has a little bit of blotching in the background um, uh, that that's just barely visible but if i do a super stretch and same on the altaz image you can see some of this color blotching in the equatorial mode image that is not really present in the altaz image and I think this is because there is a lot less dithering taking place uh, in the equatorial mode image or there's a lot less movement uh, so the noise doesn't get distributed as well. And this color blotching is more visible in images uh, of fainter targets or smaller targets where there's a lot of black around uh, the main target. Um, so for example, this image of M106 that I took, uh, this was five hours of data and the color blotching is a bit more visible in the background over here. Um, and if I do a super stretch, again, you can see this color blotching. However, once the images are processed, uh, the background looks a lot darker, so it's not much of an issue. Uh, for example, this image of M106, I processed it here in the next tab, 
And as you can see, it's not much of an issue. You can't really see any of that blotching in the background, uh, even though this is, this is an extreme case where the blotching is very, very visible. Um, but once the image is processed, it's not much of an issue. And look at the amount of detail I can get in the core of this galaxy. So uh, I think equatorial mode is still an excellent uh, addition uh, to the C star feature set. And in my next video, I'll be uh, trying out some solutions to that blotching and uh, I'll let you know what I find. So be sure to check out the next C star video I'll be doing. Thanks for watching and clear skies.